We're back. That's right. The boys are back, as you can see there. One, two, and three. Not exactly good facsimiles of the three of us, but eh, we do what we can here as far as our artwork on our uh, YouTube channel, the Horsepower PSN with Chad Summers and John Hardoon. Thanks for tuning in once again as we take a look at races this week at Kentucky Downs. Good to have you back, Chad. Thank you. All right, Chad. So I got to ask you because actually, you know, let's go through uh, some of our uh, most recent comments or questions from our viewers because there are a couple in here that uh, do pertain to a question I want to ask you or two. Uh, Victor Freed, 5913, love you guys. That's Victor Freed, 5913. Nestor Malero, 7250, guys, my appreciation for such great job. That's Nestor Malero, 7250. Anthony Ciavatella, 8279, great show. That's Anthony Ciavatella, 8. Two, you think seven, the Anthony Civitella's 1 through 8278 did not think it's a great show? Just 8279? <laughs> just 8279. 8278 and lower. Not so good. Uh, TJ pops it. No nonsense quality racing discourse. Thanks for sharing. Betsy Hobby Wicker 4051. Congratulations to Chad on a win with Filoso today, which was. August of the 29th at Saratoga. And uh, I w that's what I wanted to bring up, Chad, because you weren't on the show with us last week. But uh, that was a hell of a performance. And that horse, uh, wow, the horse looked really good. And I had, and we had talked about it that I had never, it's very unusual to see a horse that, and again, it was Dylan Davis, right? That, mm -hmm. uh, that he brings the horse up to right behind this is at the midway point he brings him up to right behind the leader then he backs off again and then comes back and just fires down the stretch <laughs> what was that what was going on there when he when he when he brought the horse up and then decided to bring him back down or to or to release really on him it's not really a decision it's just kind of the way that the race the race plays out you know the the races at saratoga going a mile out of that wilton shoot are a, a little bit dicey and spotty and if you if you see the head on the Manny Franco on the one horse of Dwayne Lucas, if he doesn't get over, he looks like he's going to crash through the rail. So he makes an over aggressive move, which then kind of jostles everybody else in position, and and forces them back. You know, for a while they were they were capping it at eight horses, and then the, the Met Mile came. Even though it was only six horse field, they decided that they were going to have more more horses out of there. But it's it's a dangerous spot. It's it's a it's a quick run. There's a temporary rail, and then you have a quick run to the turn, um, and it's all about position. And you got to break well. And there's a lot of moving parts. You know, it, it, it's it's kind of interesting. You, you bring it up because we're going to talk about the race at Kentucky Downs here, which has an unusual left-handed turn and, and and things that are that are different. And it, it makes it a little bit tougher. I think John, you'll agree. It's it's tougher to handicap because so much can happen in these races that it doesn't matter what's on the on the paper because so many different things can can happen after they come out of the gate john yeah i mean kentucky downs is brutal it's just uh, i'm going to tell everybody in advance proceed with caution because <laughs> they run at this track 10 days out of the year or 11 days out of the year it's kind of a european turf style course where they go up and down hills <laughs> And uh, they're pretty hard races to watch because uh, good luck picking your horse up uh, unless you're on the front end. They give you terrible camera angles. It's a mess. And they give away nothing but money. You'd think they'd figure out a way to, to really present this much better on TV. It's 2024. I don't get it. I mean, they should have a drone follow them around or something. It's just horrible. It's really horrible. Uh, tell me about Filoso, Chad, because the horse, like I said, it was very impressive. Uh, how impressed were you? Yeah, no, he's, uh, we, we thought he was kind of uh, a special horse all along, and he uh, he, he kind of ran to expectations in that second start. We gave him the, the, the first race sprinting to, to get ready for this race, and um, it, it came together well. So, you know, the water gets gets much deeper from here, um, but we'll see we'll see what happens. What's, uh, so, so far, no, we're not sure when he's going to run? He's going to run on October 5th. It's just a matter of uh, 
what state you know there's there's three races all on the same day um in california new york and kentucky so um just kind of evaluate you know all the opportunities and the options and um see what what goes on where and and make the best decision we can uh did i notice that you claimed uh what one or two horses over the past uh week 10 days claimed a couple of horses claimed uh claimed the filly name she caught my eye um she was did not run very well so and I was the only one that dropped for her, so I guess I was the only one whose eyes she caught. And uh, then we claimed the horse named Accretive. It was an 18-way shake, which was actually the biggest shake of the uh, of the meet at Saratoga for 62,500. And um, his sister was a filly we were very proud, you know, very uh, very high on. She was my pick for three-year-old filly when we did the previous show with More Fatigue. Uh, that's that's his sister. Okay. He, he, he's a horse that was. Uh, second to Gunite as a three-year-old in the Amsterdam. He was second to Cody's Wish as a four-year-old. He's now five. So there's, uh, you know, his body of work is obviously there. Ran against a really nice horse. Of, of Brad Cox is running second in the race. And, you know, just kind of see where he fits in best. You know, he's the kind of horse that he's great at stakes placed. But you want to have the opportunity to try and get him a stakes winner. And, you know, if you got to go out of town to do that or whatever, you, you find the spot where, where they're not. And uh, Bernie Flint, who I worked for a long time ago, used to tell me, keep yourself in the best of company and your horses in the worst of company and you'll be all right. And, and that'll be our plan for Accretive. We're not, we're not trying to chase money. We're trying to chase wins. All right. So, again, uh, we've, uh, we've been asked by our, our uh, viewers before about trying to follow or how could they follow uh, Chad's horses uh, and, uh, you know, his, his claims and such. So we do have a link in the description area. Check that out. Uh, and uh, that's the best way to check and follow. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. As soon as we get to 1,000 here on YouTube, all of our racing is – all of our racing – uh, analysis, picks, and so forth will be available for free. In the meantime, uh, today, just like every week, we have two races at least to talk about, and one of them will be on Patreon. So also, link in the description. You can check that out. $5 for our Patreon, and that's it. Uh, you, if you don't like it, you can uh, stop, and you're only out 5 bucks for the month. you got a month's worth of uh, options here. One show a week, at least two races a week. And again, at least one on Patreon that you're not getting here on YouTube. So uh, let's go ahead and start off again. It's Kentucky Downs. We're going to be doing races 8 and 10. Uh, the race 8 is the mile turf race. This is the grade 3 mint millions. So this will go off about 441 on Saturday. The morning line favorite is the 10 Ancient Rome. He's at 5-2 to two, coming off a third place finish. Um and this just happened, what, a couple of weeks ago in the Arlington Million? Is that what that was, John? Yes, yes. It was at Colonial Downs. It was the Arlington Million. The interesting thing about this race is you have three horses that have run last week at Kentucky Downs. The three ran on August 29th, the four ran on September 1st, and the 11 ran on September 1st. So uh, this is a $2 million purse. The last time they all ran, I think, was in a $500,000 race. So they get an opportunity to make a lot of money in just 10 days or whatever it is. All right. Let's start with the one. Emmanuel, a 6-1 to one shot, coming off an 8 last time out. Also ran an 8 uh, just a few starts ago. So this was a horse previously trained by Todd Pletcher. So this is going to be the first for Michael Maker, John, 6-1 to one under uh, Jose Ortiz. Yeah, it's an interesting horse because Mike Maker usually has had a lot of success here the last couple of years. He was the leading trainer, I think, the last four or five years here. This year, not so good. I think he has only one or two wins. However, that being said, I think I like this horse in this spot. I think he's going to run well. And, uh, you know, it's away from Pletcher. Not everybody improves off of Pletcher, but uh, I think this horse is going to run well here. I like this horse in this spot. You know, it's an interesting horse. He was purchased in an online digital sale uh, over the summertime, and he went for five hundred thousand dollars. And if the horse wins, uh, he's going to get close to one point two million. So it's certainly going to be a, a, a good buy. Um, Maker's done well with these kind of horses, but a lot of them he's claimed, and he's been able to move up off certain trainers, doing things that they weren't doing before. This is an interesting one because he's just trying to mimic what Todd was doing. Now, I've always thought this horse's best distance is a mile, so I'm glad he cuts back um, to the mile distance. But when when 
he's a he's a horse for one, and he's sold by Winstar. Winstar Stan Stallions. In fact, they announced today that they're going to stand the horse who had one career start for Bob Baffert named Heartland. Uh, is going to be a stallion for them next year. That it's a half to classic umpire that ran once. This horse had better credentials, and they couldn't wait to to put him in for a sale. Now I understand there are business decisions, and they sold Justify um, as a stallion to Coolmore. So I understand all that concept, but. When you have Kentucky Downs out there, you have Saratoga out there, there's opportunities to make money, and they're willing to let this horse go. And I don't think 500000 was reserved. I think the reserve was less. I think they had a feeling like maybe his best days were behind him. And, and so I'm going to take a pass against, even though uh, Maker has done phenomenal with horses like this over the time, uh, I'm going to pass on Emmanuel here. Yeah, this is a horse that we've talked a lot about. I remember uh, several races that we've uh, handicapped with Emmanuel. He's running a lot of steak races, and we do a lot of steak races on this show, so. Yeah, almost 50% wins for Emmanuel. All right, the two Mountain Bear. Now, Mountain Bear is 10 to 1. The sheet uh, numbers are, 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 are definitely slower than the other horses in this field, but you're talking about a horse that ran the Breeders' Cup Juvie Turf race last year, finishing second, even though he was 22 to 1, wasn't expected to finish second. Uh, the 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 the, uh, the uh, uh, jockey is off to a really nice start this year, but of course, John, we, we're dealing with Aiden O'Brien. Uh, but the number's ten to one. You think that's a good number? Well, the thing this horse has going for him is he's used to running on courses like this. I guess so they say <laughs> that this is like a European course where they go up and down. So I don't know how much the slow number really matters. Maybe the turf course will move him up. I don't particularly like him in this spot, but who knows? I mean, the thing that's interesting, and, and look, obviously, Frank Dettori is a legend, okay? <clears throat> but the the retained, the retained contract rider for Aiden O'Brien and Coolmore is Ryan Moore. And Aiden's in a couple of these races here, which are big purses, much bigger than anywhere in Europe. And, and he's not here. They sent Frankie. And this horse is really interesting. He was second last year in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, um, behind Unquestionable. But he was ridden on that day by McMongle. He was 22 to 1. So he wasn't really given a lot of respect going into the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. He ran well, came out of that, and even out of that, he was sent off in his next start back in England at 22 to one, and then in a Group Three, he's 50 to one yeah. for Aiden O'Brien and, and for Coolmore. This screams to me: this is a C-string horse for Aiden O'Brien, and you're you're banking on the like. Sometimes you got to look within the stats. Like you see Aiden O'Brien, he's 40 percent uh, greatest eight races so far this year, uh, or the last two years in in America. He wins races. I don't think this is his best horse, despite the fact that the horse did run second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year. He's a three-year-old taking on Olders, and he is going to get an eight-pound weight break, which a lot of people think is a big, big deal. But I'm against this horse. All right. <clears throat> Move on to the three Irish aces. You got Brendan Walls training, so you have another uh, really good trainer coming in here from Europe. Um, and then Tyler Gaffleon on board. I guess more importantly, Kentucky Downs. Last race was a win, so that was a nice win. Ran a 10. He also has an 8 and a 9 this year, John. Yeah, it's seven days ago. He's coming back on seven. This is one of the three horses in the race with the quick turnaround. Listen, one thing you know for sure, he can handle the track because he's one for one over it. I'm using him only because he has recency and because I know he likes the course. What, what do you do, John, in this situation, though? We, we talk about these horses coming back in one to seven days. And Irish Aces and, and, and the bottom horse, too, for Mandela there, uh, Goliad, they're both coming off big races at Kentucky Downs. But both of these trainers, and these are trainers that have a lot of horses and a lot of history, I don't remember them ever running a horse back in one week. It's not a you, you, like if it was Rick Dutcher, you go, okay, he's done this and he's done it well. What do you do when these trainers that are great trainers, but they, th this, are they only doing this because the owners and the trainers are chasing the money rather than this is their plan all along. We're running back in seven days. Well, Dick Mandel is a Hall of Fame trainer. I can't remember, and I've been following him for over 20 years. This has to be a first for him. He's never brought a horse back on six or seven days. Obviously, it's the money, you know, money rules, I guess. This is a seven-year-old gelding, so if they're getting a shot to run for this kind of money, they're going to do it. Pratt climbs aboard from, for Giroux, and that's an upgrade, I think. The other horse is the four horse. He also ran on September 1st at this track. He ran third. You know, they all ran good numbers. But and, Saf and Safi, at least on my numbers here, Safi's done this move six times and hasn't won a race. And this is a guy that's winning, you know, 25% yeah. of his races. So I, I think you do have to take something into that. And also, uh, Safi's horse, Forever is Worth, 
was able to run on Lasix last weekend, and now obviously this week he is not. All right, next up, let's go with Cash Equity, a 15 to 1 shot. Matter of fact, the, the, the next uh, several horses, we have the four Cash Equity at 15 to 1. We got the five Tuts Revenge at 20 to 1. Strong quality, the six is a 15 to 1 shot, John. So the four, five, and six, but Cash Equity uh, is coming off a nine and a 10 over his last two starts. So that's not entirely bad. Better numbers than Tuts Revenge coming in, and also a little bit better numbers than Strong Quality, who got off to a strong start this year with a nine and two eights, but hasn't been able to come back to a single digit over the last three. Yeah, but the four did it at this track, so I would give the edge to the four between those three horses. You know, the thing that's interesting about the four, he was the runner-up in the Barbados Gold Cup. You, you often hear about that uh, Barbados bounce. Oh! And, uh, <laughs> he come back. He hasn't won yet, but his numbers have steadily improved. Um, you know, so I think he's finally getting over the uh, the sunshine that he got in Barbados and getting back on uh, back on track to what he what he most wants to do, maybe. Okay. Now... Let's uh, move on to the seven, and this is a five-to-one shot. Fantastic again. Wesley Ward uh, training the horse, coming off a second-place finish at Santa Anita last time out, uh, taking a look at his sheet numbers. Fantastic again is coming off an eight. Before that, uh, ran some synthetics. Matter of fact, last four races, the last two years, last five, uh, four of them, Actually, excuse me, last six, four of them have been on synthetic. Two have been on turf. His best race, John, has actually been his last race, which was the eight. Yeah, but that was at Santa Anita. It's a totally different track than this. I mean, Santa Anita, the turf course, they're as hard as a rock. I don't know. Uh, listen, he's five to one. I think you have better options yeah. at the prices. Yeah. Look, okay. he's, an he's an interesting horse for sure. And obviously the trainer is off to a very, very hot start over there. He's an unorthodox trainer, which seems to do well at tracks that are unorthodox. The, yeah. the thing that the thing to me that that we need to talk about in this race more than anything um, is at the end of the day, um, last week, which was opening week, everything was speed, everything was wire to wire. Now today, being Thursday when we're filming this. Um, it seemed like the track was a little bit more fair today. There were horses that did go wire to wire, but horses that came off the pace. Um, if it was a, a total speed favoring track, then I think you look at this this race a little bit different. If the track's playing fair, then you can you can look at the horses like Fantastic again and stuff like that. So you know, paying attention to how the early races are going on Saturday uh, might be might be an important an important thing. But Fantastic again should be somewhat involved in the in the early pace which would which would help if the track's playing to speed talk of the nation the eight to four to one shot and you can uh, understand why you've got pletcher and aretto tees jr combined you also have a horse that's been in the money 10 out of 12 with four wins nine out of 12 first or second has the win at kentucky downs last september and actually ran an eight in that race that was with the former chainer but still that was an impressive uh, eight john at this track at this distance yeah that's probably why he's four to one but uh i don't think he's as good now as he was then not only that you know chad was talking about speed i think there's a lot of speed in this race i think the six is going strong quality i think the seven is going uh the eight's best races is when he's close up i mean there's a lot of speed i think in this race and uh for that reason at four to one i would play against the eight Talk the Nation worked on the grass, and it's funny, you'll denote the bullet workout on August 23rd, but he actually got outworked that day uh, by the two-year-old that was second with anticipation stakes for Todd. Um, and if a two-year-old's outworking an older horse, um, certainly a lot of credit goes to the two-year-old, but also a lot of maybe discredit goes to the other one. And, and I'm going to pass Talk the Nation for that reason. The nine looks a little slow, John. Reckoning force of 15 to one shot. Another Brendan Walsh trained horse, though, so you always have to keep an eye on uh, that horse uh, who's coming off a win. He's also one for one at Kentucky Downs, so if you want to make somewhat of a case for him, you certainly can at the price, but I don't like him. My, my, my thing with this, and not that jockeys always make the right decision, but you would imagine that jockey Tyler Gaffleone had the call on Reckoning Force for this race. And after last weekend when the other horse won, he elected to, to stay with Iris Aces, which left Lu Luan Machado in the irons. And look, Luan's doing doing fantastic. He might ride the best horse in the country right now and next. But um, when when the jockey chooses the other horse, sometimes you have to pay attention to that. 
Sometimes not, but sometimes yes. The favorite ancient Rome, the 10 at 5 to 2, has the win at Kentucky Downs. Uh, that was last September, uh, winning uh, this race. So he's the defending champ of this race. Um, and uh, that one was, I believe, at 11. So ancient Rome, John, is only one, based on the sheet numbers we have, of course, we only have limited. Um, but what we have is a 9. That's his best. This year, we have an 11 and a 13. Yeah, but he has earned over a million dollars, and he's one for one, and Jamie Spencer's coming in to ride him. So I don't like him off of numbers. Obviously, he's too slow. But maybe Chad knows more about him than I do. Uh, well, my, my question is, and I, I, I wish I, I knew the answer. Unfortunately, I don't. He ran on August 11th at Colonial. I would, I would hope that he stayed in America and didn't leave and went back to Europe and then come back to America. That's a big thing for me. Um, I'll try and find out if we can. We'll put it in the update bar on the bottom. But um, if he stayed here, then okay. You know, he got a race under his belt. He's Americanized. Um, but sometimes uh, what what I've noticed with, with international horses, both going to Europe or, or the Middle East and then vice versa, sometimes their best race is right off the plane and the second one back is a little bit flatter. And on paper, like, he's the favorite, and I get it. He's run some huge time form numbers. Um, like the 118 that he ran two back in the summer mile at, at Ascot would put him in the winner circle here. Um, but I'd be concerned about a little bit of a regression here. Um, I would really be concerned if he went back home and then came back again. Um, so I'm going to pass on this horse as the favorite. Um, I just think there's a lot of moving parts over here. If he wins, he wins. I get it. Like John said, the, the track does sometimes play to kind of Europeans. We saw here, you know, horses have shipped from Europe and run well, ancient Rome. The other horse that you mentioned earlier on uh, that was here with Joseph O'Brien, reckoning horse the nine, that one, he was also a formerly a European horse. So European horses do tend to run well over this track, but I'm going to bank that this horse is going to regress as the favorite. I'm going to try and beat him. Okay, and now we have got a, an interesting uh, horse here, Goliad, the 11. It's a 10 to 1 shot. He's seven years old, coming off a seven sheet number. That was a wire to wire win at Kentucky Downs at a mile just a few days ago when he's seven years old so and and, and even you, you look at the fact that whenever he's gone up against uh and i know this isn't a sheet thing but of course whenever he's been in some of these big graded stakes races um hasn't done much except the grade three win at santa anita in february but anyway john a, a horse coming off a at seven years old coming off a seven his previous races were 17 13 and so forth um this doesn't look good for him, right? Well, this was the horse that we were talking about. This is one of the three horses that all ran within the last week or so. And uh, this is a Hall of Fame trainer, Dick Mandela. And you're getting Flavian Pratt. I mean, you know, Mandela's not going to run this horse just to run him, I guess. But again, he's seven years old. He's getting the opportunity to run for $2 million. So why not? Out of respect to Mandela, I would use him because he's 10 to 1. You're getting Flavian and Pratt, and you're getting a Hall of Fame trainer. I'm not kidding him. I'm using him because I'm sure one of these three horses that are coming back on the short layoff are going to run well. I don't know which one, but one of them are. So just my way of handling I got, I got a feeling that maybe there wasn't a plane out of Kentucky town to go back to California until maybe next week, and they're like, ah, we're, <laughs> we're here. <laughs> Let's make the most of it. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm against I'm, I'm curious how these horses were able to get back in in a week or five days. Well, it, didn't, it didn't overfill. Yeah, it's like impossible. They're not, they're not giving away. Horses. I guess they're not. They're not giving enough away enough money. Only two million dollars. We couldn't. We couldn't attract. We couldn't attract more horses here. I mean, look. There's so many two million million dollar races over there and everything else. Um, I guess they've been able to find spots for for all their horses except for Torland Queen. And I, I think ultimately. Um, look, how about this? If those three horses are in the race, John, it's an eight-horse field for $2 million. So, yeah. you know, this might be um, – look, Rick Hammerly is doing a lot of work over there. He's got a very good relationship with, with Dickie Mandela. There's a chance that he might have said, hey, listen, this race is coming up, you know, small field. Why don't you take a swing? Um, because otherwise, like I said, it would have been an eight-horse field had, had this not happened. And, and, I mean, this horse this, – this horse had to be entered – before that that race the other day yeah, they're entering way out in advance you're right already yeah. entered in the race is there a chance you might scratch i don't know there's um, a chance that all three of them will scratch who knows and then yeah, i mean for that kind of money you think maybe a little bit different than some of the scratches we've seen in the past but um it'll be interesting to kind of monitor that situation 
Um, the one thing I would say is even though Goliath has done his best running on the lead, with Flavian Pratt signed up, I would imagine this horse will not be with the speed that's in there. I would imagine he tries to tuck over and save some ground early on. John, what you going to go with? I'm going with the one, Emmanuel, with the 3 4 11 and exact is one with 3 4 11 and reverse him. Chad. I'm probably retarded, but we'll take a shot anyway. I, I'm going to go with the six strong quality. Uh, sometimes in a race that's that's loaded with speed, uh, one, one horse goes and everybody else tends to take back. And the way this track is, um, I can see that everybody else take back, and Florent Giroux is going to go with strong quality. His best races, to me, came at the fairgrounds. And as much as this plays like a European track, I think that it does play a little bit towards fairgrounds. Horses that have run well at fairgrounds in the past uh, have done well. Uh, he was fourth in Kentucky Downs last time, but that was kind of a strange, a strange race that time. They went really, really fast early on. I just think that this horse, he's run some good races, inconsistent for sure. Uh, but run some good races, catches the right field, and you're getting 15 to 1 for, um, you know, Mark Cassie, who seemingly all summer, besides Kentucky Downs, where he's winless, has done no wrong. All right. Love it whenever you pick a long shot. What else, Chad? Six over? Uh, I'll play him with, uh, with a couple other horses here. Uh, I'll play the number seven horse, Fantastic, again, and I'll throw in the 10, Ancient Rome, uh, just in case, but on the bottom, I, I think he regresses off this race. I just think even on regression, he can probably still hit the board. All right, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to I'm going to go with uh, one of the top horses, Talk of the Nation, the eight over three long shots to two, to three, and the eleven. So that's race number eight at Kentucky Downs, followed by our next race, and uh, this race is going to be on Patreon. So uh, for your YouTube viewers, we're going to say goodbye. Don't forget, if you want to be able to check this race out that we're doing, hit the link, check it out, subscribe here on Patreon, $5, and you've got it. You also got all the other races we're going to handicap over the next month. Um, otherwise, if you don't, for whatever reason, that's okay, but go ahead and subscribe. Uh, this way we can get to 1,000 subscribers as quick as possible. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate you viewing us uh, nonetheless. Otherwise, we're heading to our Patreon viewers for race number 10, mile-and-a-half turf race, the Turf Cup 